name and date of birth. Lowell Court 010696. And once you got that, make sure your patient's the right patient, making sure the room is well lit. Basically saying you don't understand uh, that you're here for a lung examination, thorax and lung examination day. Is that correct? Sounds correct. Is it okay if I, as a student, uh, perform that exam? Yes. So obviously we wash our hands, carry on some conversation uh, with the patient while we're doing that so there's no awkward time. And then we would ask the patient, in order for me to do this, is it okay if I can get you to this room and then kind of see your chest wall go front and back? Is that okay? That's okay. And so, Caitlin, is there anything I missed in the first part? No, nope, did great. Good. <laughs> My work here is done. So you guys Just throw it on the floor. <laughs> so, first of all, we should do a spec. And in order to stay, I know how I do it myself in clinic, but to stay with your checklist to make sure I don't miss anything, Caitlin, tell me what the first thing is. You inspect chest for deformities, AP diameter, symmetry, and skin changes. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is look at the patient from the front. Okay. One of the cool things here is you can actually see his aorta. Not much in front of it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Everybody see that? So just a good abdomen thing. See there? Station. You've probably got a huge aneurysm. <laughs> so, uh, no, but that, that's interesting. There's something no doubt. But so look at the chest wall. So from shoulder to shoulder, looking up here, looking at the chest wall all the way down. <clears throat> Dividing line here, make sure this side looks like this side, okay? Um, maybe a little bit of mild, has anybody ever told you that? Take this excavatum, maybe just a mild bit between here. Yeah. Anybody ever told you that? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good, I'm glad we used Nolan's day. Uh, just a little mild case of that there, not much. But uh, once I've looked at that, then I can come to the back as well and look at his back, same way. Looking with good posture there. Uh, his shoulders are symmetric. They lie evenly. Comes down both sides. Spine is midline. Both sides look normal. I'm also inspecting his respirations as I do this. Looking for his uh, rate, his rhythm, his effort. Uh, noticing for any type of accessory muscle use. Making sure that I don't see anything like that. Substernal notch uh, retractions. <coughs> intercostal retractions. Uh, the other thing I would do is notice that his transverse diameter is a ratio of 2 to his AP diameter, anterior to posterior diameter. So I'm looking at that, I'm noticing that his AP diameter is good, comparatively speaking, to his transverse diameter. Alright, did I cover everything? The other things I'm looking at here is color. One thing I noticed on him, which is nothing concerning, he has some superficial uh, blood vessels here that you can see that you don't always see on patients. Not to mean that that's anything uh, majorly concerning, but he's got some superficial uh, capillaries here that you can see. Okay. Um, he doesn't have the SBC syndrome, so don't compare him to 62 year old. Um, inspects lips for cyanosis. So obviously look at his lips, they're pink in color. We don't need to touch or anything, we can just look at this point. It's not like this, the H-E-E-N-T uh, -E -E exam or skin exam. If I get this look and tell that his lungs are good, he doesn't have any nasal flaring or anything, because you can see that work of breathing as well, even in adults, but it's mostly concerning in kids that we really look for it, because as we said before, they're all looking at nose breathers, but you can see some nasal flaring in adults, potentially. Okay, um, inspects nail beds for cyanosis and clubbing. So looking at both nail beds, okay, does it say feet on there? Does it, um, does it indicate feet? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want to take off the shoes for this, okay? So just looking. So first of all, they're pink in color. If I look at the interphalangeal depth and I look at the distal phalangeal depth, I can tell that this is greater than this, which is good because the, the distal phalangeal depth should be a ratio less than one comparatively speaking to his interphalangeal depth. Look at it. It's pink, well profuse here. I could actually even do a cap refill if I wanted to. to note that his transfusion of blood is good, that he's filling back up in less than three seconds. Okay. Did I hit everything? Yep, and then you move on to palpation. Palpates chest wall for tenderness, deformity, step box, and crepitus. All right, at this point, what I'm going to do is you can do it two ways. You can actually lay the patient back, or you can do it with the patient up. It's totally up to you guys. But the big thing I'm going to do is start. Well, I'm going to start way up here. Apex of the lungs. Apex of the lungs, exactly. So if you had some type of tumor growth or something, I want to try to delineate or feel that. 
right underneath the clavicle. Trying to feel for any type of crepitus, tenderness, bony abnormalities. Can you raise both your hands up for me? like that for a second. Now as long as I'm not listening for lung sounds, percussion, things like that, it's not necessarily necessary for him to move, try to move the scapula. When I'm trying to get into the lung sounds to listen, I'm not listening right now. That's when scapula displacement laterally becomes important. So I'm just palpating, excuse me, the scapula all the way down and making sure until I get to about the bottom of the rib cage. Make sure I don't feel anything abnormal, and I didn't. So that's a good palpation of the whole chest wall, interior, lateral, and posterior aspects. And you can do each side with one hand, okay, to expedite your time. Um, palpate thoracic expansion for symmetry of respiratory effort. Okay, so palpate for thoracic expansion. So here again, guys, this can be kind of tough if you don't do it the right way. So just have the patient relax. And what you want to do here is kind of take thumbs and push in. Now notice I'm doing like that, and at the same time I'm not putting some pressure. I'm putting a little bit of pressure. Thumbs about even distance apart from midline. Push in and got a good little hold here. Tell the patient to take a deep breath in. Can you see how that expanded? Okay. Now notice I don't restrict him when he breathes. I let him breathe and let his thoracic cage expand. I just follow it as it expands. It's my, my hands are just laying there. They're not pushing in, they're not releasing, they're just laying there. Same way for the back. Get to where about the base of the rib cage is, if I don't fall. Here again, push up and in. The skin may fold just a little bit. Take a deep breath in. And notice there it expanded a little bit more than in the front, which it should. Five to eight on the back, three or five in the front. And so that's what you want to do. Grab, and then from there, once you grab, now the patient's under control and your hands are free flowing. They're just laying on the surface of the skin. Okay? Uh, palpates for tactile primitus. Tactile primitus, so what we're going to do here is about five different spots. So I can go up here with the palms. It's going to get the apex. Can you say 99? 99. 99. 99. Notice, even though it's a guy, 99. Put your arms on it. 99. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do the back, so can you cross your arms in front for me? Apex. 99. 99. Baseball. <laughs> 99. 99. 99. 99. <laughs> and I can feel a little vibration. So when y'all feel that today, and you want to do this on different body habitances, because it'd probably be different. But somebody like Nolan, whose BMI is probably 23, 22, 23, it's really easy to feel those vibrations. So if they were increased, I would kind of know what to expect. If they're decreased, I don't expect. You can just kind of barely pick it up, but you can tell that the vibrations are there. Now you can also use the balls of your hand, but I find that harder. And on women, if you're trying to work around the breast, which one takes up more room? Right? This, right? Okay, so it might be hard to try to be in it, but here I'm just using the edges of my hands. I can move anywhere I want to. Okay, so that's why I really like using this, because you can really pick it up. Okay, moving on to percussion, percusses chest wall, alternating sides. Percusses chest wall, per alternating sides. So you can do this sitting up, you can do it with the patient laying back. I'll do it sitting up, I'll start in the apex. Resonant, ladder approach. space it's going to be better versus over the rib. Alright, so I got uh, six or seven on the front. 
Cross your arms in the back. So I got all of his back and I included his lateral because when I did my front, I went to the sides and when I did my back, I went to my sides. So I get an interior lateral and posterior lateral. Mm -hmm. Percusses uh, diaphragmatic excursion bilaterally. Turn. So this right here is the one that's going to be the hardest of all the things you have to do. Okay, but it's really not that hard. All right, so watch how I do it. So if I could, I want you to take a deep breath, and what I'm going to ask you to do in just a second, Mr. Nolan, is breathe all the way out, and when you breathe all the way out, I want you to hold it. Okay? So take a deep breath, and just breathe out. Just hold your breath. Okay, so change right there. So I would take a pen, and I can still see where it was, and I'd make a little mark here. So now, Mr. Nolan, I'd like you to take a deep breath in and hold it, full inspiration. Hold it for just a few seconds. Everybody hear that change? So now I'll mark right here. If I measure that, it should be about three to six centimeters. And if you look, that's about two inches. And he's really healthy, and so it's about a two-inch split there. Now what I would do is the other side to compare. So I'll do it one more time just to show you guys. Take a breath in and then let your air out and hold once you expire. Now we'll start about the same area. Cross your arms. And anybody don't have to cross your arms here. Uncross your arms. All right, breathe in. Because we're not in the upper lung and air field, we're in the scapula. Breathe out. So I feel like it's kind of tympanic right there, or not tympanic, excuse me, resonant. All right, take a deep breath in and hold. If I get a change, and so right here is about where I heard it. And so if you look at both of his sides, they are about equal with each other, which you'd expect them to be. Okay? It's hard to believe that your diaphragm will go down, but it will when you take a full inspiration fills up your chest. Okay? Auscultates chest wall alternating sides. Auscultates chest wall alternating sides. Mm -hmm. We'll look at you too. I did have one ready, but I'll use yours. We have that the wax. Okay? So, diaphragm. Apex. Alright, so... First thing you're going to tell a patient before you put your stethoscope on them is that every time you feel my stethoscope and touch your chest, I want you to take a deep breath in and out through your mouth. Okay? Notice the breath and stop, then I move. What you're going to see clinicians do is take a deep breath in and out, and they're already moving. His breath had not finished. Deep breath in and out. Anytime you feel dizzy, just let me know and I'll let you take a break. Otherwise, suck it up. <laughs> Deep breath in and out. Now, when you get near the cardiac silhouette here, you got to be careful because you're not going to hear a lot with that heart beating. So, next time, deep breath in and out. Kind of go right here. Got to go here, right there. But I still do hear his heart deep breath. It's quiet. Huh? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. So I did all my spots anteriorly. Well, when I go posteriorly, swing, and I won't make him breathe. I'm about to 
fall out on me. So <laughs> breathe in and out, breathe in and out, breathe in and out. Arms should be crossed in front because we're moving our scapula. If you notice there, look how much it folds over. So show you guys how this is going to roll and you can see it breathe in. Sit regular. No, sit regular like this, yeah. So watch, watch where I put these lines. So this is where kind of his scapula, that line is way off. <laughs> Scapula. Scapula. Look at these lines. Okay, now, now give yourself a big hug. Big hug. Okay. And so what we've done now is we've displaced the scapula a considerable amount. Relax. Now hug. At least a little. It's kind of hard. You've got so much muscle. Uh, we displace the scapula by about that much. You see the significant difference by displacing. Now I've got this lung field here, relax. Whereas before, if this is scapula, I'm kind of limited to close to the spine because the spine's here. So that's the reason why we have him hug his head. So don't breathe. You're going to look like you've been to a Native American uh, <laughs> tribal uh, ceremony or something until I get through marking on you. All right, so hug yourself. So one, two, do, 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 okay? And it shows you on the slides exactly what to listen to, all right? All right, turn back around. What's next? Okay, uh, demonstrates ecophony. I'm going to a little louder. Demonstrates ecophony, bronchophony, and whispered pectorally. Okay. So let's say I'll listen to Nolan. He's got a cough come in today, and right here is right lower lobe. I thought I heard something, okay? So, sir, when I tell you to, I'll put the stethoscope on you, and I just want you to say the letter E and hold it out. Okay, if you get tired, just take a breath and repeat it again. So I heard consolidation here, or uh, some type of abnormal lung sound, but potentially, uh, specifically consolidation, so like a crackle or rise. So here. E. So to me, when I hear that through my stethoscope, it sounds like E. It don't sound like A. So it didn't change at all. Okay, because if it was consolidation air, when that air hit it, it would deflect it and make it change the way it sounds. Bronchopathy, same thing. I thought I heard consolidation here, suggestive of pneumonia, crackles, rawls. So now, if you would, can you say the word 99? 99. Again? 99. One more time. 99. So it sounds kind of muffled to me. I can't really clearly make out what he's saying. This time, I want you to whisper the words one, two, three, but in a whispered voice. Again. So I can't make it out. If it were to be consolidation there, that one, two, three, because of the air moving through all that would be more pronounced, and it would come up very clearly, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? Do you guys wash hands as it's in there if they have any questions? Yeah. So one of the things we did mention there that maybe you read that I didn't mention is that you're going to denote to the patient, to the, the person that you're doing the skills checkoff with, while I'm listening to the lungs, I'm going to be noting for adventitious sounds like rawls, crackles, which are the same thing, ronca, wheezing, stride, or anything like that, oral friction, or so forth and so on. So don't forget to, to voice that, okay? Any questions? Anything that didn't make sense? All right, cool. Thank you for all of you.